These are 15 very important tips to make you a better player on controller. Tip number one, reloading behind doors or your knocked teammate or even trying to pop a revive behind a door can all be a struggle on controller. It can also be a struggle on mouse and keyboard too, depending on the player's keybinds. However, since on controller, our interact button does so many different things, it's super important to look for the prompt when you're trying to do one of those things. Now, Apex has improved this feature a little bit, but it still can stump many players. So if you're up against the door and you want to reload your gun, try turning away from the door or backing up just an inch or two to get a different interact prompt. This is often how players can navigate these tricky situations. You don't often need to move your legend per se, but more so move your view where you're looking. If you can get used to this, you can begin to feel more comfortable when you're dealing with these types of situations when your interact button might wind up doing the opposite action that you're trying to achieve, like reviving your teammate instead of reloading your weapon and playing their knockdown shield as you battle the last enemy. If you are fighting behind your teammate's knockdown shield, you can also shoot all of your bullets, even though you may not be trying to shoot the enemy, just so your gun automatically reloads while you're still abusing that cover. Utilizing tactics like these will go a long way as you progress in Apex Legends. Tip number two. Everybody wants to know what's the best sensitivity. And although I don't typically tell you what I think is the best, I'm just going to go over some widely applicable sensitivities in Apex that apply to most players. They're going to be 4-4 Classic, 4-3 Linear, and or 5-4 Classic, and that's if you want a bit of a faster sensitivity. I know a lot of you will probably have a different sense than these, and some of you may even use advanced look controls, and that's fine. If you've seen previous videos of mine, you'll know where I stand on ALCs. This tip isn't to get you to change your sensitivity. It's for people who may be looking for something different, and the ones that I listed are the most popular for the average controller players, from your pros to your casuals. So feel free to test them out for a few days if you're looking to change things up. Tip number three, my recommended button layout is button puncher. This changes melee from right stick and puts it to B or circle. And then slide is now clicking in your right stick as opposed to taking your right thumb off of the stick while you're shooting and hitting B. Now if you hold the controller normally, meaning you're not playing claw and you may not have any paddles, then button puncher is the layout I would be using. Button puncher can still work if you do utilize paddles, but ultimately this will be a preference. So if you're just looking for something different than the normal one Apex puts you on, I recommend button puncher. But I do understand some of you will have already found your ideal button layout. Tip number four, master the D-pad. The D-pad is where most players select which heal to be using and when. However, the heal wheel, as I like to call it, can be a little wonky at times. For starters, when you drop into the game, Apex gives you two cells and two syringes, an armor, a helmet, and a knockdown shield. But for some reason, when you spawn in, it leaves it on syringes. This doesn't make sense as your armor gets hit first. So therefore, we must manually remember to swap it to shields, and this is a muscle memory habit that must be maintained multiple times throughout every game. Being on the wrong heal without noticing and then going to press up on the d-pad to heal, but it's on a med kit when you need to pop a battery is going to get you killed. Just not knowing what heal you're on and pressing up on the d-pad can waste precious time when you only have seconds before your enemy pushes you. So always keep your eye on that left hand corner of your screen on what your heal wheel is on and be mindful of leaving it on shields. Typically, I'll leave it on shield batteries if I have them because that way I can heal the most in the least amount of time. But if I don't, then I'm leaving it on shield cells. It is a bit annoying, but you're gonna have to do this every game and multiple times throughout each game. But the more efficient you can get with the heal wheel, the better of a player you'll be. I've seen countless players in coaching sessions get killed because they're not on the right heal and they only have a few seconds to get a heal off. So start keeping a tab on the heel wheel. Tip number five, start learning to jump as you enter a death box. This is one of the best and only ways controller players can consistently have some movement while they are in a death box. I often do this when I'm trying to pull off a risky armor swap or when I may need to get into a death box for something quick, but I'm perhaps in line of sight of an enemy. The way to do this is just hit the interact first and then quickly follow it up with a jump. If you do it right, the jump will activate before you fully get the interaction complete to enter the death box. If you're going for an armor swap, quickly scroll down and grab that armor swap and get out of the box if an enemy is near. 
practice, practice, practice this. I could not get this down consistently when I first learned it, but over time it's become muscle memory and I can do it every single time. I know there is a way where if you are running at a death box and you interact just at the right time, you can still continue running, but this is much less consistent in my view and the jumping feels a little bit more practical and something you can pull off every time if you get good enough at it. Another way you can mitigate just standing still in a death box is utilizing crouching while you're in the death box. You can go up and down, but you can't move side to side. So it's not the best thing. It's definitely not equivalent to what a mouse and keyboard player can do, but I guess it's better than just standing still and having your opponent one clip you. Tip number six, speaking of moving and looting, you wanna be paranoid about how long you're looting and standing still in a death box. Mouse and keyboard players have this great advantage where they can move and loot. And honestly on controller, it's gonna get you killed plenty of times because you're stuck standing still in a death box trying to get something that you absolutely need. However, using some discretion, you definitely wanna be mindful about how long you're in a death box just being a stagnant target. It doesn't take much for a player to one clip you while you're standing still. So anytime I'm in a death box and I think there might be someone nearby, I'm very paranoid about how long I'm in there because it's not something you want to get caught out in. Tip number seven. Now, even though Hipfire got nerfed in season 14, it's still pretty good with most of the guns. I don't know why they nerfed this in the first place, but anyways, you can usually rely on hip firing when you're within 10 to 15 feet of your opponent. This will allow for you to have a faster strafe speed with most of the guns when comparing it to aiming down your sights, so your movement can play a bigger role in these engagements. Getting in the habit of ADSing in every fight will turn out to be a very bad habit, so make sure you allow yourself to get accustomed to hip firing with most weapons. Now, if you aren't accustomed to this yet, I think you'll be surprised at how effective hip firing can be, particularly when you're up close and personal with an enemy. Try this, especially with the SMGs and assault rifles. Tip number eight gravitate towards and learn to facilitate close range fights. This is playing to the strengths of controller 100%. The best players on controller know where their bread and butter is, and that is learning to get close to their opponents and successfully killing them up close. Aim assist is strong, there's no two ways around it, and aim assist shines the most up close. But beyond that, learning how to close the gap to your enemies and focusing on close combat will go a long way. Closing the gap is not always an easy task, especially if the enemy team has high ground or is good at abusing great angles. Learning how to successfully get close to enemies is a skill in and of itself, and you want to try to facilitate these close range fights as much as possible when on controller. Now that doesn't mean you want to have an extremely weak game for mid to long range, it's just that inherently controller will be easier up close. So ideally you want to be well rounded in all areas, but there's a reason why a lot of fights in Apex end up close and personal. It's also easier to end a fight up close than it is from long range. Number nine, don't get in the habit of crouch spamming too much. Focus more so on a good strafe. If you're focusing too much on randomly crouching up and down, it will typically screw up your aim while still making you a fairly easy target to hit. Plus, on top of that, think about it. If you're just crouch spamming up and down and the enemy is aiming at center mass, they'll be hitting you in your torso when you're standing up, and then when you're crouching, they'll be hitting you in your head without ever having to move their cursor. So when you're focusing on a strafe, which is gonna be much better and more effective, try thinking about going left to right or right to left and then wide left or wide right. And you can implement other different variations as well. Strafing won't hurt your aim as much. And if you have a good unpredictable strafe, it will be harder for enemies to connect to you. When things start to become unpredictable, people panic. And when they panic, they make a lot of mistakes. People do crumble under pressure in Apex. So be wise and use this to your advantage. Tip number 10, get in the habit of holstering your weapon more. You'll be able to move quicker throughout the map and you'll typically experience less dead slides as well. A lot of players when they're first beginning don't holster their weapons much at all. And I think that's because they're worried that they will come across an opponent and they won't have their weapon out or they won't have time to pull their weapon out. And this will only happen if you get jumped or you have a lack of awareness of where you think your enemies are. So I encourage every player to get accustomed to holstering and unholstering their weapon multiple times throughout a match. And FYI, you not only run faster while you're holstered, but you can also climb higher as well too. Tip number 11, learn and implement wall bouncing. So many players I talk to know how to wall bounce, 
but they always say the same thing. I know how to do it, but I just never remember to do it in game. And that's because you just aren't practicing it throughout your games. See, you remember how to slide and jump during fights or throughout the match, right? Well, that's because you've practiced doing it at various different moments within your games. So the same concept applies to wall bouncing. Do it everywhere, figure out the different variations of it, and do it on different walls and different angles and with different legends. And then eventually, when you're in a fight, it will click to do it in the right moment. Slide at an angle, jump towards the wall, look at the wall, jump again, turn away from the wall. This is the easiest way that I can convey to you wall bouncing is important to do and learning how to do it is really only half the battle. Tip number 12, survival slot button is easier to use if you don't have it turned to off. If it's turned on, then it will be left on your D-pad, and this makes it much more accessible to use a heat shield when you'll need it in a pinch. However, if you have an heirloom or you like to inspect your weapons or your fists, then turning it off makes it so that you have to press start and then click it from your inventory. This is ultimately up to you, it's going to be a preference, but in terms of value provided, it's probably much better to leave survival slot on so that you can use this more effectively to put down heat shields when needed. You'll see in this example here, I struggled and almost died as a result of not having this turned on. Tip number 13, always run at least one close range weapon on controller. Like I said, it's no secret that aim assist is a thing and it is powerful at times up close, so utilizing a close range gun makes sense. It could be an SMG, a shotgun, or it could honestly be an R301, Flatline, or Havoc. Those are all pretty good weapons up close. It's really up to you with what you like and what you're confident with. But right now I can say the Prowler, the Car, and the Peacekeeper are all top tier weapons for close range combat. This could change in the future, but if you're not running a close range weapon, you're kind of hindering yourself while playing on controller. Tip number 14, get the best weapon skins. I know some people call these pay to win and I don't necessarily agree with that, but I would say that they are objectively better as they allow for more visibility on their iron sights. So the weapon skins I recommend getting are inked and infused for the Volt, Lone Star or Superstar for the Peacekeeper, Merciless Wing or Death Ray for the Wingman, LED Res or the Galvanizer for the Alternator, Kill Switch or Outlands Avalanche for the R99, and if you see Teal Zeal return in the store, this is a great skin for the flatline. This is once again going to be a preference, but if you like weapon skins that don't take up more of your screen and have good iron sights, then these skins are great for that. Tip number 15. Here are a couple quality of life changes in your settings I recommend switching up. First is change your FOV to at least 100. I play on 110, but this will allow for you to have a more zoomed out perspective and be able to see targets with your peripheral vision better. And number two is turn vibration off. I found aiming without vibration was much more natural for me. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn about the keys to clutching more fights, well, I broke down everything in this video here. Feel free to check it out next. Thanks for watching. Peace.